Were there any uh, questions on today's homework? Yes? You know, if you can, if it's possible. If I can, if I'm capable. There is a, a question. Uh, well, do you know the problems? Right, right off the top of your head, you have to look at No, I don't know the problems. <laughs> no, I meant like you, when you assign the homework, you, you obviously go through them. And then yeah, I look through them and say, okay, 21, 1 through 3. So let's go over to homework. Let's open 21. <laughs> oh, man, I apologize. These are way too easy. <laughs> but just for confirmation, right, that, we're just simply doing a V in, V out on, that, on this one, right? And then we're going to do... V in, V out? Yeah. Okay, first off, um, what does it mean by big and big? If you've been reading the book, you should know. Well... Well, simple, it means for AC, that's a short, and for AC, that's an open. But for DC, this is a open, and this is a short, because there's no DC current flowing into the gate and no DC current flowing into the open, the capacitor. So all this says is that this circuit here biases M2 so that it's flowing, the DC current is 20 microamps. So the first part, find ID, the DC, it's just 20 microamps. But of course, this is straight out of the book because we did all kinds of examples like this. Okay, next. If this is an open, then what is this? I mean, for AC, if this is an open, what is the AC VGS1? Zero. What is the AC VGS2? Yeah, one millivolt, V in. How do I know that? Big capacitor, it's a short. For AC, this voltage and this voltage are the same. It's a short. We're going to do this over and over again. When it says big for a capacitor for AC, that means it's a wire for AC. When we see big resistor for AC, that means it's an open. Now, what is the current that flows here? GM times one millivolt, GM VGS. What is GM? Oh, gee, that's straight out of the book. 20 microamps, 10 by 2. It's 150 micro. So the AC is 150 nano. You probably took at most two minutes to do this problem, and I apologize for how easy it is. It wasn't meant to insult you. It was just meant to give you an easy problem after the test. So when you say this, there's like a 1 nano current flowing through M1. Through M1 nano AC? Well, that means it's not entirely zero, but it's negligible, so right? You, yeah, so if you actually do uh, a V out minus V in on this one, you actually... Where's V out? out? You keep, someone keeps saying V out. I'm so not... you treat it like an open. But wait, where's V so out? So you treat your V out as like... Wait, open. where's V out? I don't... You need to tell me where V out is. Make it, uh, v, um, v but this is a bias circuit. It's used to bias the transistor. It's not... The output, what we're doing is over on this side. Okay, then your resistor's not big enough. Yeah, one meg isn't big. No. Unless you're doing the nano and you got a little bit of DC current and you look and you go, oh, this voltage and this voltage are the same, then the, the resistor's too big. But one meg in either process isn't big. Yeah. Well, think about it. If the output resistance is 5 meg and you use a 1 meg resistor, that's not large compared to the output resistance. Any other questions? I approached it that way because it was chapter 21. I, I, just, I assume that you were just prepping us for that route. So I... I, I <clears throat> Why don't I do another problem just like this, and let's sim it, and let's make sure everybody can do it, right? Yeah. But, I mean, you did get that the AC VGS here is VN. No, no, no. The AC voltage right here was one millivolt. Yeah, no, it made sense to me that it would be zero on the other side, but I was getting some Yeah, because think about it for a sec. This, in your mind, is what? We've derived the small signal resistance of a gate drain connected transistor. What is it? 
1 over GM. We did this time and time again. How do I know? It's, I, it's ID VGS, which is 1 over GM. So then I say, okay, well, if I put 1 meg here and 1 over GM 6.5K, I've got a voltage divider between 6.5K and 1 meg. That's going to be like 0 0.001. Does everybody follow? So that means I'm not going to get, but if I go 100 meg, now I'm at 0 0.00001. So it's two more zeros, so I'm going to get a smaller signal. Yeah, it really threw me off at the end, because I, I just assumed. With the what? With, with your one millivolt, it means the, the end. I mean, I know it's, yeah. it's just called the end, but at that moment, I assumed that now we're just going to go ahead and press for the V and V out, or V out over here. But it didn't ask for that anywhere in here. So I guess you could say that it's uh, like uh, I, I chose arbitrarily to call my V V V out. Okay, so why don't, yeah, so you're... You're making things and more complicated. Yeah, you're making them complicated. These problems were meant to be easy to boost your homework grade. Yeah. And, and, <laughs> and then what, what added to it was that it, my, uh, my uh, LP spike simulation matched my hand calculation. I don't know if you had a 1 meg here and you said this is 1 over GM and you did the divider and I expect them to match. But again, this is going to be a tiny little current. And again, it's not going to influence the DC voltage. The DC are calculated before the AC. Let's do an example. And let's change it. So I'm going to do this exact problem here. But instead of having nothing up here in the drain, I'm going to use a current source up here in the drain. Okay, so let's do this problem. And I'm going to do the AC portion first. Then we'll do the DC. So let's see. Now, I'm not trying to make this hard, although you might argue that I am. <clears throat> okay, so assuming this is in saturation, how much current flows in it? And let's go 30 by 2, 30 by 2. Let me pause because I'm going to make it easy. And I'm going to look in the back of the book, and I'm going to go 30 by 2, 20. 10 by 2, 20. So the exact same. So I don't need to do any VGS calculations. Now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to put a transistor. And I'm going to connect that transistor to VN, which is 1 millivolt. And I'm going to say this is big. Now if I look at this circuit the way it is, how much, how, what's the DC VGS here? What's the DC voltage right there? I don't know. It's a mistake. It's floating. So I got to make it some voltage, right? So I'm going to do the following. Now, the output resistance of this is like mega ohms, right? If I make this one mega ohm, is that big? No. It's comparable to the output resistance of the circuit. Right? Yeah, that's 4 meg. If I put 1 meg there, now this is loading it. Now, yeah, relative. Yeah. yeah, but if I make it big, then the charging time of my output, which let's go ahead because we love V out, and write V out here. Can't have a circuit without a V out. That's just evil. <laughs> okay, so for let's do the DC. Okay, now... If you're not following, you got to ask because if you ask around, I'm not afraid to give bad grades. You earn the grade, not me. So when you come in at the end of the semester, I didn't graduate. You failed me. What am I supposed to say? I'm sorry you didn't take my class more seriously. I don't know what to say. You determine the grade. Okay, so if you don't understand, you got to ask. Let's do the DC, knowing these are from table 9.1. What is the VDD? How do I know that? It's right in the top of the table. VDD, 5 volts. I'm making it easy. You don't even have to calculate anything. You'll make it a little harder later. What is the VSG? 1.15. One so what's this voltage? Are we not repeating ourselves over and over and over? Okay. 
what's the current that flows in this device and this one? Notice I'm using green for DC. Why? Why is it 20 microamps in both? Yeah, they have the same VGS a current mirror. Yeah, exactly. Wait, so how much current flows in here? Okay, but wait. How much DC current flows in here? Zero. Why? How much DC current flows in the capacitor? Okay, if somebody asks you how much DC current flows in a capacitor, you don't need to think deep. It's zero. There is no DC current in a capacitor. How much DC current flows into the gate? Zero. Now, in the nanometer, there could be picoamps or something really tiny because there's like gate leakage. But for here, so that means if you made this 100 tera ohms or something like that, those picoamps could drop a voltage. But for now, we'll just make this like 100 meg, just 25 times bigger than these others, and it's big. Anybody not agree that 20 microamps flows in there? Say that zero flows in there. Where does the 20 microamps flow here? No, it doesn't have any place to flow. So this voltage starts to go up for starting up. This voltage starts to go up until this turns on and sinks the precise amount. For DC, this is an open and this is a short. Why do I say that's a short? There's no place for the current to flow. So it's gate drain connected. So what's the voltage here then? Okay, 10 by 2, 20 microamps. What does that voltage have to go to, table 9.1? Okay, is this challenging? Yes, I haven't been studying. It's very challenging. Any questions on the DC? Anybody not understand why this voltage for DC, this behaves like a gate drain connected transistor because no DC current flows in there, no DC current flows in there. Can a DC current flow through the big resistor and charge that node? Yes. We're ready to move to AC. No? Okay, what's the AC voltage there? Why? Yeah, it's just got a DC current. There's no AC over here. It's, when you see a DC current flowing in a gate drain connected and there's no variation, it is a constant voltage. This will not wiggle from 3.85. Now, with the parasitic capacitance, you might see a teeny, teeny wiggle here. But for all intents and purposes, what we're doing is it won't wiggle. Questions? Okay, what is the resistance? Well, let's ask a simpler question. What is VSG here? It's zero. What's the AC here? Both sides are at zero. So what is the AC current that flows down this way? What is VGM VSG? Zero. So would everybody be okay? What do I see looking up there into the drain of the PMOS then? Yeah, ROP. Okay, what if I had a Casco device here? You'd say, oh, at this point, because we're moving in Chapter 21, we're not going to re-derive the output resistance of a current mirror every time. We already did that over and over and over. We're going to simply say the resistance looking up would be GMROP squared. We don't re-derive it because that's a waste of our time. We already know how to do that well. At least some of you do. <laughs> we know that for the final, if it says derive the output resistance of the cascode, we know how to do it. But for amplifiers, we're not going to spend the time to re-derive that. We already have done it. Okay, what is the AC voltage here? Does everybody see that? This is a short. So we get one millivolt here, V in. We got one millivolt here. So what's the AC current that flows through there? And what is the resistance I see looking down there? Yay? 
oh, well, wait. So these two are in parallel. So this current GM1 millivolt flows through here. So V out, since they're flowing backwards, equals minus GM V in times R out N in parallel with R out P. Everybody cool with that? Question. So what's the gain? Let's calculate it and then let's simulate it. Question? Yeah. Uh, I, let's, okay, so your VI right there is uh, negative GM, right? VIN, right? Yep. Times the uh, parallel. Well, what is GM times VN? What? One over GM. No, no, no. What is this called? Current. Yeah, the drain current. Right, but can you say that that is also one over GM? No, the only time I have one over GM is if I have this. Why? GM VGS is ID. Burn this into your brain. We use it over and over again. Well, you can't have it so. This is an open. For AC, this is an open. So it's not gate drain connected. Print this out this evening. Get a magnet and put it on your fridge. <laughs> Tell them it's artwork. Any questions? You know how long that would last in my house? My wife would be like, what the hell is this here for? <laughs> Respect me. <laughs> uh, all right, any questions? Uh, when you say ask me, right, at the beginning before you started there, you said if you have, if you have questions, ask me. Yeah. Or ask, right? Yeah. Can we ask you via email or? Right now. Right now. I mean, if you're sitting here and you're asking, or you make note if you watch the video. Does anybody ever watch the videos for yeah. a second time? No? Yeah. No? Yeah. Okay. When you're going through them again, you have questions, bring them in and ask. Well, because the homework is, so right now, uh, when do you post uh, this next week's homework? I'll do it this afternoon. So I'll go ahead and print it out, and then I'll look at it. If I have questions, I'll ask you tomorrow. So, I'll give you two weeks on this next homework. Instead of it being next due next Tuesday, it'll be the following <laughs> April 5th. That's so crazy. <laughs> All right. Are we ready to, let's plug in the numbers, and then I want to do this sim, and then I want to discuss it, and I want to do the DC, see what happens when we move. All right. So let's see. This is minus 150 micro times... Uh, 5 meg in parallel with in parallel with 4 meg and let me see 4 meg in parallel with 5 meg is 20 divided by 9 which is uh, 2 2.4 did I do that right 20 divided by 9 no 2 2 and uh, 2 ninths so that would be roughly 2.2 meg. So that's equal to minus 150 times 2.2, and that's equal to minus 330, and close enough, volts per volt. Any questions? Is it bothered I didn't use a calculator? I related, relied on this. It's good. OK, we ready to sim it? No? Okay, what kind of topology is this? We need to add more here. It's a common source with current source or current mirror load. What's the load? Boom, that's the load. What's the amplifying device? Boom, that's the amplifying device. That's common, right? There's V out, there's V in. 
What's this device used for? That's yeah, the bias circuit. What if after I scan my notes, I take a walk around the campus and I start posting the notes like random places, just a page here and a page there? Wouldn't that be cool? <laughs> It's artsy. Look at that, man. That's art. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's go over here and get your money's worth with some simulations. Let's see. Oh, yeah. This looks good, but that's not the one I want. How about... Is it this one? Oh, no. Wait. Oh, this is lecture 16. Yay. Oh, stupid. Oh, well. Why did I say stupid? I used the 50 nanometer instead of the one micron. Oh, well. Let's get the scissors out and do a little clippage. See how long it takes me. Uh, P underscore one U. It's good for you to see me. Two U. Thirty U. I don't want you to think I can't use spice. Come in here in 10 years, I'm really going to be crazy. And you, okay. To look right? You know, by then all my classes will be on video, and the only thing I'll do is work problems and complain how you're not watching the lectures. <laughs> oh. Tell me what to do. What do I hit? Right on. All right, that made me happy. <laughs> Doesn't take much, does it? You know what? I deleted that current source and I didn't need to. And burning class time. See how much faster it would go if I had these already made up with PowerPoint? PowerPoint rocks. What's that? I know, man. I could just read to you. Reading's great. Oh. I don't even have to show up. Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, then I'd be liable for your crash. What's a big resistor? Ten gig. Ten gig. Let's go. 250 MEG, not M for milli, because that would inflict us with pain. Yeah, and then let's get a 1 farad capacitor, but we don't use 1F, we simply use 1, because one 1F was 1 femto, and using that would inflict us with pain. You know what? I don't like that. I'm going to go like this and stretch it on down. Boom. Uh, there we go. Any questions on how I... I got a question. Does it matter if I leave a DC value for this? No, it doesn't do anything, right? It's the capacitors blocking. See any typos?
why don't we be neat here and go V out? Because your greater me likes clear and concise homework that demonstrate that you're learning. We ready to go? What do we estimate the gain as? Three thirty. So what is that in DB? What's a hundred? One hundred DB or one hundred is forty DB. What would be three thirty? What would be forty six DB? Adding six DB to forty. Six DB is two. So it'd be two hundred. So what if I what if I was at 500? 14 dB is 5, so that would be 54 dB. So we're going to be somewhere between 46 and 54 dB for the 330, which we could actually get a little closer if I wanted to spend the time on it, but I don't. So let's hit roll them. Now, notice Vn is 1 millivolt, which is 60 dB. So our output is going to be 46 to 54 dB larger or 14 to 6 dB. Does everybody follow that? So I hit my output here and 14, 60 plus 44 would be, yeah, that's a little bit different than what I thought. But I don't like that because then I have to plot V out over V in and I don't want to do that. What I want to do is cheat. And that's slightly less. Did I do something wrong here? Let's see. I think it's right, and I don't know why it's. Does everybody see that? So how do I make it so I only have to plot the output to find the gain? That's right, I simply change this to 1. Then whatever I plot on the output is the gain, which it says here, we go to linear, that the gain is less than 100, which has me perplexed. So let me go make sure I use the right numbers in the back of the book. So GM is 150, 4... That would be 20, 20 divided by 9. Huh. Let me see if this is really 1 volt here. It is. And this is 1 volt. Yes. And let's make sure there's 20 microamps flowing in there. How do I do that? It is. So I'm perplexed. So instead of just saying, oh, I'm off by a factor of three, I'm going to leave it at that. What am I going to do to, to troubleshoot? Tell me what I can do to find out how off I am. Yeah, check the GM and the R out. So I'm going to go ahead and close these. And then I'm going to do a file, save as, example two. Now I'm going to right click here and do a dot op. Hit run. And then I'm going to go to view, spice error log, and I'm going to look at the GM of M1 and the R outs of M1 and M2. So the GM of M1 is 139. Eh, that's a little lower than the 150 I calculated, but pretty close. What is the RD, or how do I find R out N and R out P? No, not 1 over GM. GDS, what is GDS? What does G stand for? What does G stand for in GM? 
Transconductance. So what is G? What is R? Resistance. What is G? Conductance. So GDS is the conductance between the drain and the source, which is 1 over the resistance between the drain and the source. You know, there's no magic in any of this. You just need to make sure you understand what's going on. So what is that? It says that it's uh, 139 times, or, whoops, 8.87 times 10 to the minus 3. Let me see if I know how to do that in this calculator. Uh, let's just do... Point one two three four five six eight seven one x. Oh, so that says that the output resistance is considerably less than what I calculated. Wait a sec. I said that the NMOS output resistance was five meg. Here it's showing only one point one meg. So that's why the gain's lower. But why would the gain be, why would it only be 1.1 meg? What's up with that? Oh yeah, that's right. If I go back and I look at how output resistance changes with VDS, See that the lower I go in VDS, I can have a factor of, I mean, almost 10 in change in output resistance as I change VDS. So the numbers I'm getting make sense. Any questions? Okay, so I want to do a couple more to help you. Are there any questions on the SIMS? Does everybody know how I would look at the output resistance of the PMOS? And you know what I bet? This one has a larger VDS, so let's go look. And I look there, and that would be uh, M2. And the GDS is, well, it was lower than the NMOS, 5.72. So together, they're going to have an output resistance around 1.1 meg. Can anybody not go and look at what the actual small signal parameters are based upon the dot OP? Any questions? Okay, I want to do two more things here before we move on. <clears throat> One is, I want to do a transient simulation. Okay, what is the time constant? Okay, so when I say transient, what pops into your head? Because I know something pops into my head, and I assume that everybody's thinking the same way as me. What does transient mean? What? Transient means time domain. So the x-axis will be time. What does a dot AC mean? Frequency. frequency, the small signal analysis. The x-axis is frequency. Dot OP is the operating point. So what do we do in an AC? We always do the dot operating point calculation, calculate the small signal parameters. Then we do the AC sim, even if we're not using small signals. Here, I've got AC 1 millivolt. That's not a small signal. If I do a transient and I use a peak of 1 millivolt, this guy will shut off. Okay, so here's the problem. When I look at this circuit and I do a time domain, this is a real circuit. I turn the power on. How long does it take this node to go up? What does this voltage go to for DC? 1.05. How long does it take this node to charge to 1.05? Five time constants. What charges this node to 1.05? So everybody follow. This is a great interview question. Okay, so this node needs to go to 1.05. How does it get there? Oh, it gets charged through this resistor, because you need to think, where does the water flow? It gets charged through this resistor, here to 1.05. But wait, for AC, for DC, what's the DC voltage here? Zero. So I got a resistor charging a capacitor. What's the time constant there? What is it? One times 250 meg, 250 million seconds. 
Does everybody follow that if I do that and it doesn't power up, like the simulation doesn't power up and this is zero, that it's not going to work? And I'll get frustrated. So I'm going to show you. Let's do, I'll show you this. Let's see if it, because sometimes it'll do an initial guess for nodes and it'll power up fine. So let's go ahead and right click on this and do a transient for five milliseconds. Hit OK. And then I'm going to skip initial operating point solution because I don't want it to go and start at the right value. I want to see it fail. Now I'm going to does AC do anything for a dot tran? No. It does nothing. So I right click on this, go to sign. Even though it's AC, I'm going to do a sign and I'm going to do an offset of zero, an amplitude of one millivolt, a frequency of one kilohertz. Notice 1K has a time a period of one millisecond. I put five milliseconds for five periods. And I hit OK. Now I hit run. Nothing succeeds like success, so the first thing I do is plot this. Boom. Does that look right? If it was jagged, what do I do? Dot options, plot wind size equals zero. Then I come over and I say, add plot plane. Then I come over here and I say, okay, this should be one millivolt AC on 1.05. And I see that, hey, it's one millivolt, but it's centered around ground. Then I go over here, and I go, okay, well, what's going on here? Let's add another plot plane. And I plot this, and this should be 100 millivolts, because the gain is 100, floating around 1.05. And I see that, hey, it's at 5 volts. Why is it at 5 volts? Why is this node at 5 volts? Yeah, this is off. I've got to wait 250 million seconds for this to come up. Does everybody see that? So let me hit save. Let me hit save. Okay, so let me ask a sanity question here because I don't want you saying, yeah, I took analog IC design from Baker and I passed. And they ask you a question like that I'm going to ask you right now and you can't answer it. So this voltage is at zero. So what's the state of this transistor? Off. Valve's not turned on. What's the voltage here and why? It's 5 volts. Why? The PMOS here has a voltage. It's a current mirror. But there's nowhere for the current to flow, so what happens to the source to drain voltage of this guy? Goes to zero, right? And the source is at 5, so what does the drain have to be if the source to drain voltage goes to zero? 5. So just because I've got the VSG here and a VSG here doesn't mean that I have, have it working correctly over here. So this tries to supply 20 microamps, but this is off. There's nowhere for the current to flow. So then this goes up to 5 volts and this shuts off. Questions? Yes? Okay, do you agree this transistor has 1.15 volts source to gate. Yeah, it has to. It's got a bias here. Do you agree that's enough to cause this guy to source current? Yeah, it's a current mirror. I mean, no deep thought. But there's no place for the current to flow because this transistor's off. So if there's no place for the current to flow, it can't supply 20 microamps. So the voltage across the device has to go to zero. It just slides down the curve. It just does exactly what we saw in chapter 20. It does exactly what we saw in chapter 20 right here. Oh, as the voltage here goes, uh, if there's no place for the current to flow, the voltage here goes to VDD. And the current source shuts off. If I look here, let me ask a similar question just because I'm getting scared. If I go back over here and I ask, if I remove this resistor, whoops, if I remove this resistor 
and I ask you, what's the voltage on the drain? There's no place, there's no current flowing in the device. It's got to be ground. If I ask you, what's the pressure in the sink if no water is flowing in it? Well, there's no pressure. Sitting there, there's no water in the sink. Pressure's got to go to zero. Similarly, if I go over here and I look at this and I say, okay, well, if there's no current flowing in the device, what's this voltage? VDD. This is exactly the circuit we were just looking at. Okay. So now, I'm going to go back and unclick this UIC and see if it starts up right. And I'm going to save this as uh, example four. Let me ask you this before I do this example. If I made this a 40 by 2 device, and this a 40 by 2 device, and this a 20 by 2 device, what would you do? You have to calculate the DC operating conditions before you do the small signal parameters, right? Does everybody agree with that? So if I go home this evening and I make up some nice homework problems for you to work over spring break, and I say, oh, your homework is... I don't know what the maximum number is. It's A41 through 46. And you go look at your homework in the file here, and you go, hey, there is no A41 for through 46. What are you going to do? Go re-download. You're not going to go Google the group. Hey, there is no homework. How did he assign that, right? I say that because I know if I did that, people would come and they'd say, hey, it's not there. You go re-download it because I updated new homework problems. All right, so let's go. Question? Yeah, because uh, you said it's off, right? But you have the 250 bay. Doesn't that make it? Doesn't that turn it off? Well, wait, you'll get a teeny, teeny current flowing through there. Why this node charges up? But 5 volts over 250 meg is like 5 nanoamps. So you get a teeny current flowing in there. Why this slowly charges up 250 million seconds later, it's at the right value. So I just got rid of the skip initial operating point, so it'd start up at zero, or start up right. So let's hit save. Let's hit run. And now look, hey, it biased up at the right values. And now let's see what our gain, how do I find out what my gain is? Got my inputs one millivolt. How do I find the gain? I want to get a good grade on my homework. Let's subtract the DC. Minus 1.058? I don't know. Hey, wait a sec. Something's weird here because this is giving me a gain more like what I anticipated. Uh... Hmm, that is interesting. I don't know why it's this AC didn't give us a gain closer to what we calculated. Anyway, all right, does everybody see now I can read the gain directly off? And one millivolt, why can't I divide this signal now by one millivolt to show the gain is 100? What's the issue there? Yeah, it'll divide by zero. I can't take in the time domain and divide two sine waves because the sine waves go to zero and it'll give me an error. Any questions on this? I want to do one more sim. No questions. I've covered this so well, everybody understands it. Okay, I don't believe you. Let's do one more. I'm going to save this as and then I'm going to go over here and I'm going to get rid of this. Boom, boom, boom. And I'm going to get rid of this. Wait, I'm going crazy. Okay, there we go. And now I'm going to do the following. 
and I give a DC value of zero. And then I'm going to do a dot DC. And I'm going to sweep V in from zero to how about 1.5? Or actually, let's go from 0 0.5 to 1.5 in one millivolt steps. Yes, it does matter. Thank you. Okay, and let's get rid of the AC because that just confuses me. Okay, so does everybody see I'm sweeping? Okay, so first off, this is a DC circuit. So when I'm below the threshold voltage, and remind me, what's the threshold voltage on this transistor? 0 0.8. So when I'm below 0 0.8, what's the status of the transistor? Off. Off. So nothing interesting happens until I hit 0.8, right? Then this starts to turn on. Then if I go all the way up to 1.5, this will be on a lot more than this one, and this device will triode and pull the node to ground. So let me ask you questions. If this is at 0.5, what's the state of this transistor? Off. Okay, now, please don't make me cry here. What's the voltage here when this transistor's off? Five. There's no place for the current to flow. It's an open. Does everybody follow that? Okay. If this is at a large voltage, this transistor turns way on. What's this voltage V out? Gets pulled to ground because the transistor's on way more and can sink way more current than this can supply. But I'm going to show that. Make sure I understand it. Roll them. When I plot V in, what's this x-axis here? It's V in. So when I plot V in here, or V1, what am I going to see? Yeah, I'm plotting it against itself. I'm going to see a line with a slope of 1. Boom. <laughs> now I'm going to come over here to V out. And I know at low voltages, my output will be high. At high voltages, my output will get pulled low. And then right in the middle, around 1.05, is where I'm in my amplifying region. And I can actually add a plot plane here, plot V out again. And then I can take the derivative of that. And that slope is the gain. Oh, 330, what the hell? That's exactly what I calculated. Why is it negative? V in goes up, V out goes down. Don't think deep. All common source amplifiers are inverting. V in goes down, V out goes up. Any questions? Okay, so here I've not got the valve on. Pressure here is the same as the pressure here. It's 5 volt. Here I have, don't have the valve on. Pressure on the output is the same as VDD. As I turn the valve on, the pressure starts to drop. I want to operate in this region for biasing, for high gain. When I turn the valve on way too much, I can't supply enough water, and the pressure on the output goes to ground, or in other words, this guy triodes. So when I have a low voltage here, this guy's cut off because it's below the threshold. What's the status of this device and why? Well, it's off, but what state is it in? Is it in triode, cut off, or saturation? Okay, when you say a transistor's in cutoff, that means its VGS is less than the threshold. This one's VGS isn't less than the threshold, is it? No. So this is in triode because the source strain voltage goes to zero, but its VSG is greater than the threshold. Okay, so in my mind, I'm thinking, man, you've covered common source amplifiers with current, uh, common, or with... Uh, current source load really well. So now you can spend the rest of the lecture doing examples. 
Any questions? Okay, so now I'm going to repeat this problem, but I'm going to change it a little bit. Before I do, I want to ask you a simple question. What's the maximum and minimum output voltage I can have with this amplifier for linear operation and why? What's the lowest voltage this can go to? Let's see if you remember your current source stuff, current mirror stuff from chapter 20. VDS sat. Can't drop any lower than VDS set because then this guy goes out of the saturation. And in analog electronics, we want to keep everything in the amplifying or saturation regions. What's the maximum voltage this can go to? You can go all the way up to VDD minus VSD sat. Now, in reality, I can go all the way up to VDD and all the way down to ground, but in those regions, I'm not going to be in the amplifying or high gain area. So if I go back and look at my sim, and I look, okay, what's this voltage? And I look on the side, it's 4.77. There's a little bit off because of the cursor. That's VDD minus VSD sat. For that process, what is VSD sat? 250 millivolts. So I'm estimating that my maximum output is 4.75 volts. What's my minimum output? Oh, it's right here. It's at, well, my cursor's off a little bit, but it should be VDS sat, which is 250 millivolts. Boom, there it is. I'm seeing it exactly right there. My amplifying region is this area right here. Questions? Any questions on this? Okay, let's do another problem. So I'm going to use exactly what we just learned. And you're going to blow me away with your insane knowledge and how good the quality and instruction is here. And you're not going to make it unnecessarily challenging. No, no, I got to make it challenging. That's my thing. Again, what table am I using? 9.1. <clears throat> What's the DC current flowing in both sides? 20 microamps. What's the DC voltage there? 1.05. What's the maximum the output can swing to? What's the minimum the output can swing to? Again, 250 millivolts. VDS sat. What's the maximum it can swing to? VDD. What is this voltage here? Now, this isn't wide swing, right? So this is VDD minus VSD or VSG, right? This is VDD minus 2 VSG. There's a VSG here. So this is VDD minus VSG. So this can swing all the way to VDD minus VSG minus VSD sat. And where did this second VSD sat come from? Yeah, this PMOS. Righto. Tell me what the gain is of this. Tell me quickly, what's the VGS here? There's no difference. It's just, I'm just repeating myself. What's the resistance I see looking down there? What's the resistance I see looking down into the drain? Is there anything different than what we just went over? 
Star out in. Any questions? What's the resistance I see looking up there? R out cascode. GM R out P squared. What's the gain? What is that approximately equal to? Because I want to don't want to inflict pain on myself. I want to get through the homework quick because it's spring break. Why? That's much larger than R out N is much smaller than R out cascode. That's the whole point of cascoding. Boom, I'm done. Next problem. Questions? Too easy? Too hard? Not enough colors? Just reach in my bag and grab some. Any questions? I'm sitting here going, man, this is clear. They're kicking ass. Then I'm going to get the homework back and I'm going to be like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, instead of doing, I'm going to do this. <laughs> <laughs> you know I have a sense of humor, right? Some people would think that, oh, ah! <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I'm going to get my marker out and write it on my face and do a selfie. <laughs> no, don't do that. That's <laughs> How many people have killed me with their homework? <laughs> I'll put a little HW next to it. All right. We're ready for another one. What do you think I'm going to do? I'm going to do a PMOS. Sound good? All right, so let's do the following. You know what? Let's do, let's, uh, let's do this. And then we'll sim it. Before I do a PMOS, let's do this one. got me thinking I need more colors. Tell me what to do. Okay, first question. Does this transistor follow table 9.1? Is it biased so this voltage is 1.05? If you say yes, you're going to lose massive points because you do not know what the bias current flowing in that transistor is. There's no current there with the 20 microamp. So tell me what to do. Does everybody follow that? There's no magic here. I gotta do what? Um, find ID. Yeah, find ID. So at this point, would everybody be okay if I wrote plus minus VGS and I wrote five minus VGS all over 100K equals 120 micro per volt squared divided by two times 10 over two times VGS minus V threshold N squared. Oops. Is everybody cool with that? Okay, I have to calculate the current before I do the small signal parameters. You turn in and you say, oh, it's table 9.1 because that's what we've been doing the examples with. You get zero points on the homework problem. Okay, so tell me what to do. Okay. 
So what is this 10 over 2, 5 divided by 2? That's right, 1. 2 times 5 is 10, 10 over 10 is 1. What is 100K times uh, 120 micro? 2 times 5 is 10. 10 over 10 is 1. Yeah, you're Oh, let's change it to 5, sorry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Getting ahead of myself. All right, now what? Let me see. 10 to the, what's 100K in scientific notation? And what is 120 times 10 to the minus 6? So what is this equal to? 12. Any questions? I don't want you saying he never worked problems in class. So let me see, 12 times 1.6 would be 12 plus uh, 0.6 times 12, which would be, yeah, 19.2. Thank you. And so then I can write that as uh, 12 VGS squared minus 18.2 VGS plus 2.6. And then I can write BGS. Any questions on that, ninth grade math? I don't remember where I learned this. All right. And so I can write opposite of B is 18 point. You know what? Let's do. Mm, eh, let's not. 18.2 plus or minus the square root of b squared, 18.2 squared, minus 4 times 12 times 2.6, all divided by 24. Uh, am I going to have to get my calculator out? Let me see if I can do this quickly. So that would be uh, 48 times 2.6. I'm going to have to use a calculator. It's uh, 14.36. Have to be square root of everything. So it's VGS equals 18.2 plus or minus 14.36. 14.36. Divide by 24. So obviously it'll be the plus. So what is 18.2 divided by 14.36? That's uh, 32. Really? Yeah. All right, and then what is uh, the ID? Notice how I put a box around my answer. It is 5 minus 1.36 divided by 100K, and I think I can even do that one, so that will be 3.64. 4, 3.64 divided by 100K is... 36.4 microamps. Yay or nay? Yay? And let's put a box around that. Any questions? What's the DC value here? Is this device in saturation? I know it's in saturation because the gate and drain are connected together for DC. But it's not a 1 over GM because for AC, that's an open. So now, what's the AC current that flows? How do I calculate GM? I'm going to leave it at that, except I'm going to write the gain. 
What is the gain V out over V in equal to? What's the resistance I see looking up here now? Do I need to show that? Is this an unreasonable problem? Anybody not see how I got R out in parallel with 100K? Here's the R out to AC ground. Here's the 100K to AC ground. They're in parallel. The current that flows through both of them backwards, the minus sign, is GM times VN. Yay? Any questions? I want to do one more real quick before we quit. Is it making sense? Amplifiers. Did it make sense in 320? Lido? <laughs> So let's do this, and you guys tell me real quick how to solve this problem, because you know one of the things I hate most in life? Faculty that can't stop their lectures on time. <laughs> sure you've never had that problem. <laughs> I did start four minutes late. I've got that class right in front of here that inhibits my ability to set up the computer equipment on time. Whoops. Oh, whoops, I don't need that. Stop pushing information into my brain. Tell me how to calculate the gain. Let's just do, first off, does anybody have any questions about the DC here? What's the DC voltage there? 3.85. What's the source to gate voltage? 1.15, what's the DC current? 20. Looking good? Okay, what's the AC voltage right here? What's the AC voltage there called? Yeah. Trick question. See, I did try to trick you. What's the AC voltage there called? The in. What's the current that flows down there? Right? What's the resistance that flows here? So what is V out? Oh, whoops, I got an issue here. This is, uh, let's call this VSG to be correct. So V out equals... GM VSG times R out P in parallel with R out N. But wait a sec, you said common source amplifiers always have a negative gain. If this node goes down, what does it do to this transistor hint bubble? Turns it on. If it turns it on, what does it do to this node? Goes up. Wait, how come it's not negative? Because this node is V in, but V S G is V source, which here is zero. A C V source, it's V D D minus. Uh, where did I do it? V source to gate is equal to zero minus V in. So V source to gate is minus V in. 
And so V out over V in is equal to minus GM V in times R out P in parallel with R out N. Oh, whoops. Thank you. Is everybody cool with that? What's the output swing here? This node can go all the way down to VDSAT, 250 millivolts. This node can go all the way up to 5 minus 250 millivolts. Oh, wait, it's the exact same structure we did with the common source where it was the NMOS amplifying device. Any questions? Wait, but this is the load, and this is the source, so this is still common source because, and this, since this is the source. Yep. Have a good day. Look for the homework this evening or as soon as I can get to it. I know you're all anxious to...